expectations and the residual effects of evil. In other words, are there um, places in the world that are, I mean, for lack of a better word, more evil than others? Are there places in the world, for lack of a better word, that are more holy, more consecrated, more sacred than others? You know, if you've ever been at a church at night by yourself, something spooky, odd there. Maybe not for you, but for me. I'm not a very big fan of uh, church at night. Never have been by myself. Are there places, are there locations around the world, the question was, where there is a residual effect of evil? I, I tend to think that there are. Just like there are certain places that are special to us as Christians and believers, I think there are places that are special to the satanic world. Just as there are those that are more highly committed and dedicated to the cause of Christ, there are those that are more highly committed, uh, committed and dedicated to the cause of Satan. And I do not believe that the darkness of this world somehow stopped at the Renaissance somehow stopped at the Industrial Revolution. Throughout human history, there has been Satanism, child sacrifice, hedonism, perversion. So much so that in Genesis 6, God destroyed the world. So much so that in Joshua, God commanded an entire group of people genocide. So much so that God will once again wipe out a vast majority of this world and its wickedness. Though we have become more adept at covering and sophisticating our sin, the heart of man is still desperately wicked. And sometimes you can go down a rabbit hole, as this writer that we're about to read mentions, and find yourself face to face with the truth, though it be long buried and well hidden, nonetheless is there. Recently I was reading a book called The Shinar Directive by Dr. Michael Lake. Tremendous book. I don't agree with it 100%, but a great book. But... Within the pages of the book, as I was reading and studying, it mentioned a location. It mentioned a location. And as I began to research that, the location was in Belgium called the Castle of the Kings. And I began to research that place because of its famous, or should I say infamous, connection with sacrifice, Satanism, and the power brokers of this world. As I have often said on the Soul Trap, I don't believe that Satan is at rock concerts with teenagers smoking weed, throwing up devil horn signs. I mean, that might be demonic to some degree, but I don't think that's where you find the real power brokers of the principalities of this world. I do believe that if you were to look at the superstructure of the world, the way in which it is managed and run, the higher you go up that pyramid, the closer those that are at the top are to the powers of darkness. I want to talk to you a little bit today about a castle in Belgium known as the Mothers of Darkness. In a very good article, the writer relates the following. Sometimes you begin to research something and it leads you down a rabbit hole that seems to never end. The article which I'm about to write contains, the writer says, a lot of very dark and disturbing information. And let me simply uh, parenthesize here and say that if there are young children around, I would highly recommend that they not listen to this. The writer goes on to say, because, because of that, I pray that every person that comes to read this be converted in the precious blood of Jesus and a hedge of protection of Christ's holy fire be placed all around them. I further pray for people's eyes and hearts to be opened by the, this information so they can clearly begin to see the truth around them. I ask that anyone reading this who is of the dark side and whose intention it is to do evil, that their eyes be blinded, confusion befall them, and every obstacle be placed in their path until they give up their dark intention. And he ends his prayer in Christ's name. This writer is very aware of the reality of the spiritual world. There is a castle called Chateau de Amaroy. This castle is also known as the Castle of the Kings. It is located in Belgium, near the village of Muno. Now, this was brought to our attention while in a chat room, the writer writes, and the person told me to Google it because it was a deep subject, and boy, were they not kidding. 
At first it appears that not much can be found about it, but as you dig deeper you will be shocked at where it takes you. The castle is referred to as the Mothers of Darkness, and monarch programming is supposedly performed on children there, among other things as well. This castle and its domain, the Munio Forest, once belonged to Prince Philippe of saxe coburn of Gotha, Count of Flanders and father of King Albert I. He purchased the property in 1869 to the Marquis van der Nuut de Asace. The castle was built in 1877 for Philippe by the architect Gustave Santanoi. It has exactly 300... Oops, that's my phone. All right, now we disconnected the phone. <laughs> it has exactly... 365 windows, and was later bought by Alice Solvoy, niece of the Belgian scientist and industrialist Ernest Solvoy, and today is apparently still owned by the Solvoys. Now what's so special about that? Well, the Solvoys are the people who provide us with the controversial antidepressants such as Prozac and Perexetine. Now, I won't get into the discussion about revelation and sorceries and pharmacaea and all of that, but needless to say, the people that own, arguably, the darkest castle, the Mothers of Darkness, the Castle of the Kings in Belgium, are the same people that provide you with Prozac. I'm sure that there is no connection there. These drugs, though, have been suspected for the spurs of mass killings being witnessed in schools and universities around the world. Dennis Solvoy, who was actually born July 1st, 1957, is the vice president of the Solvoy Group, CEO of the aviation and director of Eurogenetic Biotechnology Company. Now, if you want to know what Eurogenetic is, there was a contract of research organization for the biopharmaceutical sector entered into collaboration with Smith Klein Beecham biologists for the production of recombatant proteins phase one, two, three. He said, what does all that mean? It means that they do some very, very spooky stuff when it comes to pharmaceuticals and your body and your mind. Now the soul voids are not only involved in pharmaceuticals, they're also involved in psychological training. They are connected with a group called the Life Skills Company. It seems innocuous and harmless enough, which belonged to Patrick Solvoy. The writer or researcher states that he could not find anything to corroborate that there was a direct connection between Ithaca International, a Solvoy group, and the Life Skills as far as a trading company. But they did find a site that had information on it. Now, there was a lot of suspicion between this Life Skills Company group, which is an international group, and the Solvoy group. And what is interesting about it is that it is basically a company aimed at training or rather retraining and initiating behaviors. It's a behavior modification group. And here's what they say on their site. The SBM program provides a structure which helps schools to implement changes or modifications to their culture with the aim of building skills in the students to enable them to become more responsible, resourceful, emotionally intelligent, self-aware, and self-managed. In effect, we advocate licensing the students to become managers of their own behavior. So, from the pharmaceuticals that have direct connection to the children, to the life skill program that has direct connection to the children, the Solvoys, who own the Castle of the Kings, have a direct influence with children, shall we say. In a 2000 book dedicated to the Dutro affair, quote-unquote, the dossier of the pedophile, there was a information given about a large scandal, most of which here in America none of us ever knew about, but it was a scandal called the Dutro affair. What is the Dutro affair? It was the scandal of an affair written by John Nicholas and Frederick Laveresier, mentioned that at this castle there were satanic rituals, parties, and child sacrifices allegedly taking place. A report of the Dutro affair references to the letter of a retired armed guard talking about this castle. At the beginning of April 1996, he was hosted by a priest a Dutch friend of the priest came to pick him up, and the Dutch mentioned 
the Chateau de Emmeramore, as a place where the satanic soirees took place with child sacrifices. An American from NATO who allegedly took part in one of these parties slash rituals and felt disgusted by it gave this information to the Dutch, hoping that something could be done about it. There is a lot of evidence to prove that the existence of the Illuminati pedophile rings are quite real. Now let us not forget that this just didn't happen here. This has been something that has been going on around the world. From Pizzagate, as Americanized as that is, to this castle. You can Google the castle and see it. You can't get on the property, but you can see it. And it is fascinating, terrifying, to imagine what darkness lies behind the walls of the castle of the kings. The Dutrill affair was a massive pedophile network that came to light and was consequently hushed up. Marc Dutroux was born November 6, 1956, and he is a Belgian serial killer and child molester, convicted, mind you, of having kidnapped, tortured, and sexually abused girls during 1995 to 1996, ranging in range from 8 to 19, four of whom he murdered. He was also convicted of having killed a suspected former accomplice, Bernard Weinstein, later proved insane. He was arrested in 1996, four years after the appearance of his vict disappearance of his victims had begun, and has been in prison ever since. Though he briefly escaped in April of 1998, there was widespread anger, however, and frustration among the Belgians due to police errors, the general slowness of the investigation, and Dutroux's claims, and here it is, that this man, Marc Dutroux, was actually a part of a sex ring that included high-ranking members of the police force, the government, and international people. This anger pitched when the popular investigative judge in charge of investigating the claims was dismissed on the grounds of having participated in a fundraising dinner for the girl's parents. The investigation itself was wound up and everything was hushed hush. His dismissal and end of the investigation resulted in a massive protest called the White March of 300,000 people in the capital of Brussels. Of course, we never heard about that. In October of 1996, two months after Dutroux's arrest, in which demands were made for the reforms of Belgium's police and justice system. In Belgium, they have their own variation of what we call the X-Files, but theirs refers to a series of horrific witness accounts of an alleged pedophile network. Now, I want to hesitate, or I want to stop here for a moment and say that, ladies and gentlemen, that's something that's coming up more and more. Remember, it was just a couple months ago when Corey Hain began to talk about the real problem the real problem in Hollywood. Everybody knows that gross, dirty, filthy Jewish producers are going to take advantage of young starlets with wide-eyed dreams. That's nothing new. That's been told about for years. But the real dirty secret is the pedophile, the children, and even the other darker things that may be going on. In Belgium, as I said, the article states they have their X-Files, but it refers to the witness accounts of alleged pedophile network. Five women and a male transvestite who testified under oath in Belgium, under the code name X, described an underworld of snuff films and sadomasochistic torture that was almost impossible to believe. They stated that politicians and other highly prominent officials were involved. A massive pedophile network was coming to light and was hushed up as quickly as it surfaced. Some reports say that up to 20 key witnesses, quote-unquote, committed suicide or died in mysterious ways before testifying. Of course, that's, that's always the way that it works. In fact, as macabre as it may sound, human skulls were actually found at sacrificial sites identified by witnesses, in particular, at the sex headquarter. The satanic group behind the Belgian murders is said to be connected with similar rings in Holland, Germany, and wait for it, yes, even in America. In truth, most likely, there is a global network that operates in a vast majority of countries. Satanism is run like a transnational corporation. And the writer says, why not? These are, after all, the CEOs of major corporations, government officials of countries. There are many testimonies 
recorded during the Dutro affair, pointing to orgies organized in the castle, the Mothers of Darkness. Mark Dutro's accomplice, Mikhail Nihul, organized orgies in the castle. It was testified to. Child corpses have been exhumed in the park of the Chateau de Soto, which is close to the Belgian border, and which was the property of the serial killer, Michael Fortenay. One of the global centers of Satanism, it is believed, is the castle of the Dark Mothers, the Mothers of Darkness, the Chateau de Emeroy, or Castle of the Kings in Belgium. Not the Kings of Belgium, the Kings in Belgium. The castle is close to the French border, some 20 kilometers from Luxembourg. Its view is protected by thick forests, and guards keep out the curious. In the grounds is a cathedral with a dome. How macabre and blasphemous is that? A cathedral with a dome containing a thousand points of light. When President George Bush spoke of the thousand points of light, he was speaking in code about this place, many believe, a place of initiation for the highest initiates in the Satanic Pyramid. In this satanic cathedral rests the throne of the high priestess of the upper hierarchy, a position known as the Queen Mother, which, by the way, every Catholic in the world is very familiar with, though they do not understand the sick and satanic root from which it comes. Every day it is apparently said that a child is sacrificed in the basement. Of course that's rumors, of course that's silly talk, of course that's nonsense, that stuff doesn't happen again. Certainly it happened with the Incas, certainly it happened in China, certainly it happened with the Aztecs, certainly it happened with Moloch and the Babylonians and the Assyrians, and even, yes, even the Israeli kings like Ahab and Manasseh, but that stuff is long gone. We're far more sophisticated than to kill innocent children, a la Planned Parenthood. Every day, sacrifices. Remember all this when you're listening to Lady Gaga speak of her famous mother monster. This is not to be taken carelessly. One writer states that guards keep the curious out or invite them in, and some have never been heard from again. I'm sure that's urban legend, certainly. While researching all of this, one writer says, I came across a YouTube video posted from a man's cell phone. He states, quote, We have visited Mother of Darkness Castle in South Belgium, the one which is listed as the world headquarters of the Illuminati. We came with my girlfriend. The front gate of the castle was open, believe it or not. We went into the park. When we approached the castle, I wanted to leave, but my girlfriend was excited and thought it might be a good idea to talk to someone, and just for the sake of putting it on her blog. We argued a bit, but she went toward the castle and never came back. I waited for her half an hour, went toward the castle myself. The security person came out, confiscated my camera, then escorted me outside. They said they have never seen my girlfriend. I waited in the hotel nearby for a day, but she never turned up. Finally, I went to, to the police nearby the village of Muno the day after, but they threatened to arrest me for trespassing instead. Of course, they said people in the Mother of Darkness castle, uh, of course they said uh, that uh, they've never heard of her. Uh, I'm sorry, let me, re let me reread that. Of course they said that people in the Mother of Darkness castle had never heard of us or seen us. I was summarily dismissed and have not received any help. The video was made by phone. The only, only evidence I have left. Is that nonsense? Sensationalism? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not. For the record, there are a lot of people that don't joke about that place. There are a lot of people that will not go near it. There are a lot of people that fear the castle of the kings in Belgium. There was another report released about the Dutro affair and the castle of the kings in Belgium. It stated that se uh, child sexual abuse networks are part of a lifestyle of generational Satanists who make up the Belgian ruling elite and many of the ruling elite around the world. The behavior is not confi confined to Belgium. In an article by David Richards, he writes, The Dutro Affair definitely proves the existence of Illuminati pedophile rings. 
The scandal started with the arrest in Belgium of Marc Dutroux in 1996 for the abduction and murder of girls as young as eight. This case was explosive because Dutroux was a small cog in a sex slave ring involving powerful people. His accomplice in the kidnapping, Michael Livier, testified, quote, Mark always told me that he kidnapped girls for people who had placed an order with him. Hmm. The orders came from a man by the name of Michael Nihol, a career criminal involved in financial fraud and drug trafficking. Nihol had connections to the highest echelon of Belgian establishment and government. Survivors of the abuse network were emboldened by Nihol's arrest and came forward to testify. Many witnesses were des designated simply as X, followed by a number by the police, so their testimonies and their identities could be protected. The names mentioned in the arrest reports and the names mentioned in the reports are some of the highest. One, for instance, is Count Maurice Lippens, who was a regular at the Bilderbergers. At the Bilderbergers. Even the very Belgian royal family has been implicated at the highest levels. And clearly, as the writer stated, the child sex abuse networks are part of a lifestyle. And do we not see them everywhere? In America? In Britain? Pedophilia is purely demonic. The reports were that the children were sent to VIB parties, and I want to be very careful in how I read the following articles and information and accusation. The children were sent to VIP parties and clubs and villas where they were, subje where they were subjected to violent sex, escalating to perversions unimaginable and horrible. Rape, torture, bestiality, the descriptions are beyond fantastical. There were some girls who were survived. Due to the extreme abuse they suffered, the girls actually, who testified, also were claimed to have by psychologists disassoci disassociative identity disorder, where the mind splits into tens and even hundreds of different personalities. These personalities are brought to life by different triggers. For instance, a compli compliant sex slave can be brought into existence by a certain word. When they would hear some of the testimony of the mind control, it was clear that this was at the highest level of both occultic and psychological training. The pedophile and sex ring is also used for blackmail. The abuse networks function as a system of blackmail to make sure everyone in the Illuminati and their criminal organizations toe the line. One witness testified of her role, quote, In Brussels there was a villa in which a room was set up with built-in cameras. Why did I have to get those guys clearly in the picture? Why was I supposed to get them to hit me and brutally rape me? One word, blackmail. The word that was never mentioned. I only started to really understand it when I began to turn 13 and 14, which means in her testimony she was being raped, sodomized, and beaten as young as 8, 9, 10, 11. She also testified that sex with children was a way to shore up international contracts and business partnerships. This is how the process worked. Handlers invited someone who could be useful to them to dinner, and after they had been quote-unquote liquored up to a party, cocaine was plentiful, and the men were led to ideas by pornography over and over. The prey were then taken to a room where a child lay waiting. One of the main people that were indicted, Michael Newhall, has admitted that abuse networks are used for blackmail in fact, in an interview he gave from prison, he said, I control the government. Everyone has compromising dossiers on one another to be used as leverage in the right situation. This is the Belgian disease. And one would add it may not be the Belgian disease. It may very well be an international disease. The Dutroux affair was a perfect illustration of how the justice system and the mainstream media worked in tandem with the establishment to actually hide 
the truth. Nothing was ever really brought to the mainstream. Nothing was ever really brought out. It was all kind of dismissed as silly and ignorant and kind of just covered up, sort of like Pizzagate, sort of like the sex problem going out in Hollywood. Nothing to see here move right along. But the truth of the matter remains. There is a castle. The castle of the kings in Belgium, otherwise known as the Mothers of Darkness. A castle that is reported and purported to be in direct connection with the power brokers of the world, the Illuminati. A castle hidden by darkness, clouded and shrouded behind the forests. Illuminati abuse networks function as a satanic, sadomasochistic venue. Now one could simply say that this is a old castle in a dark region of the world that broods and brings forth a lot of um, urban legend. But what about the Franklin cover-up? What about the Franklin cover-up? And what about Pizzagate? What about Corey Haim and his claim? I can tell you that the number one problem in Hollywood was and is and always will be pedophilia. That's the biggest problem for children in this industry. The casting couch even applies to children. Oh, yeah. Not in the same way. It's all done under the radar. Nobody talks about pedophilia. It's the big secret. And it's widespread? Oh, yeah. I was surrounded by them when I was 14 years old. Surrounded by them is what he says. What about the Franklin cover-up? What about Pizzagate? What about these things? You know, we, we tend to think somehow that because we drive newer cars and we can talk on smartphones, we tend to think that the heart of man is not wicked and that the reality of the powers of darkness are not there. But the truth of the matter is, that is not the case. The information contained in such cases like the Franklin cover-up, the Dutro affair, the Mothers of Darkness castle, is horrific. But it, but it does remind us that we're dealing with something beyond anything that we could possibly imagine. The Illuminati, or more accurately, the dark spirits running the Illuminati, are creating, so many of them believe and claim, an imitation kingdom of Satan, which is a mirror image of the true kingdom of God. Remember that the image is opposite of what you see, one writer states. They turn things upside down and backwards, but when you flip it around, you can see that the imitation or mockery that they are trying to make is very clear, very clear. Some believe now that the main leadership is actually located in the USA. The queen of Hephzibah is who they follow. She is the high queen of all the satanic kingdoms and controls great wealth. She is supposedly, quote-unquote, the most powerful woman on earth, which lends itself to the title of the great whore, the most powerful witch, which some group calls her the locust queen, or queen of the locust, or the dark mother which ties itself back to that castle in Belgium and straight on through to Revelation chapter number 17. Like the Blue Bloods, their marriages are arranged. And genetics play a huge part in who gets to rule in the societies at large. There are some specifics to the genetics that allow some to rule over others and some to rule not over others. Some believe that they are in attempting to bridge the gap between the spiritual and the physical. One of the things that is very fascinating is the matriarchal nature of the satanic rituals, which is very interesting when you look at feminism, when you look at Mariology, and when you look at even the very Garden of Eden. One writer states it this way, the entire satanic kingdoms are a matriarchal society where the females are the real rulers. Hence the hive mind and queen bee. Most of their ruling class is hidden, in other words. The queen of England bows down to the queen, the great whore. There are six separate kingdoms on earth, it is represented. Three kings of patriarchal societies and three queens of matriarchal societies. The Hepzibah group, the great whore's group, is called, wait for it, the Mothers of Darkness, and they are a powerful ruling class of their own. 
What is called Satanism is the ruling hierarchy of the ancient brotherhood pyramid under the command of demons or fallen angels or watchers. Like all the other parts of the network, it is strictly compartmentalized. The highest levels of the satanic network lock into the highest levels of the brotherhood. But the lower degrees are not allowed to know the true nature of the organization they are involved in. Some of the levels of Satanism are known as the Sisters of Light, the Five Star Generals, Master Counselors, Keeper of the Books, Keeper of the Seals. There is any myriad of names to define and compartmentalize who is who. But whatever names and whatever sub-compartments and categories, it is easy enough to see that their reach is vast. The Illuminati, the ruling elite, whatever you call them, are still just men. The big difference is, is that they are ruled by demonic forces. They have sold their souls for an earthly kingdom which they are fighting to keep. They believe that the lies that Satan has whispered to them, that they can be rich, that they can rule the land, have great power, become immortal, that they can indeed be as gods. Satan always fulfills part of his promises. He gives them riches beyond their wildest dreams, pleasures beyond anything they can imagine, land and power that is all-consuming. And by this, they become subservient. The real question is, not just the men, but are there crossovers? Are there hybrids? Are there those that are the offspring walking among us today? If you ever go to Belgium, I'm sure it's a beautiful place. But I would highly suggest that you stay away or at a distance from the castle of the kings in Belgium. I'm sure, I'm sure that there are a thousand excuses and a thousand entries of Snopes that clarify that all of it is urban legend and silliness and that there's just not human sacrifice going on anymore and pedophilia is not an international global ring and Satanists don't exist and demons aren't around and all of that stuff happened in the past but ever since Henry Ford gave us that Model T, why, why all of that stuff has gone away. And men with great power, absolute money, well, they would never indulge in the darkness of the human heart, in the darkness of a Belgian forest. Hmm, maybe. There are reports, though, that at certain times of the year, at certain times of the year, there are howlings and sounds and noises from the castle of the Mother of Darkness. Again, I'm sure it's all urban legend, but I wouldn't want to book a stay there anytime soon if I were you. Pizzagate, the Franklin cover-up, Hollywood, the castle of the kings, beloved, Wickedness is all around us, and your Bible is telling you that. It is not telling you how to just get through your day and drink your latte and get a good deal shopping and buy one, get one, and all of that. It is telling you that we are engaged in spiritual warfare. Better open your eyes up. Better recognize. Uh, and this one may be a little bit, um, maybe a little bit of a connective sort of a show. We're going to be connecting some dots here, but one that I think is very, very fascinating, and one that I think is very, very interesting, and I do believe connected powerfully and profoundly uh, with the Word of God. Maybe even more so than than just some of our standard uh, soul trap shows. There is an interesting connection in Revelation chapter number eighteen, something that. You know, for most people, either that are Bible students, is not necessarily an uncommon or un, uh, uh, you know, uncommon knowledge. But the term there in Revelation chapter number eighteen, the term that we use, sorcery, is translated that way in our English Bible, and I believe rightfully so. But its root is that Greek word pharmakeia, from which we get the term pharmaceuticals, pharmacy. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not by any stretch of the imagination anti-medicine. Some people are anti-vaccine, some people are not. I'm not getting into that for this particular podcast. When I have a headache, there's nothing that does me any better than a couple BC powder, and I'm good to go. 
But there is a very strange and powerful connection when it comes to that term sorcery, pharmakeia, and the spirit world. And that's what we're really going to discuss here for the next few moments, and I think really go down a rabbit hole that is, that is much deeper than we could possibly imagine. One writer states the following from OpenScroll.com. Everyone is now taking drugs for one reason or another. There is that vast array that is sold over the counter, and there's that which finds its way into processed food and drink, which you probably consume several times a day. Then there's the prescription kind. Most doctors who are plied by the pharmaceutical companies are happy as can be to write prescriptions for every symptom on your list, which meets the expectation of and even demands of many patients. To make the point, there's actually a Reuters article from August 1st, 2017 that states that more than a third, more than one third of U.S. adults are prescribed opiates in 2015. Now, ladies and gentlemen, most folks are casual about drug use because we've been sold the idea that quote-unquote legal drugs are for our good, physically, harmless, absolutely, spiritually, harmless, and we can trust our lives to the professionals. But the evidence to the contrary is mounting, and it is very convincing indeed. The real question that we pose today at the Soul Trap is this. Is there a darker agenda than you and I may have imagined being facilitated by the pharmaceutical industry, drugs, uh, however you want to phrase that? And that is a really good question that the writer brings up and the Soul Trap brings up. Sorcery, pharmacy have gone hand in hand, hand in glove, as far back as man can reach in antiquity. Sorcery and the dark arts have sought to use chemical arrangements to manipulate everything, from time, to metals, to mines, and even the very biological makeup of human beings. Secret potions and alchemy have been the trademark of the darker dimensions. But we have come to believe Satan's propaganda. You see, we tend to think of the powers of darkness as swirling around bonfires and togas, chanting old cure and nine-inch nail songs. But I submit to you, as I have posited here at the Soul Trap for, for a long time now, that the powers of darkness have a desire to cross out of their estate into our estate, something that they were judged for by God in the realm of Scripture. We know that to be a, a true and that it has moved forward in our life. It is not locked in the medieval times. It's certainly not locked in Babylonian times. And one would far more readily be able to see demonic activity in the cutting edge of human genome and DNA manipulation than they would be in the weekend Dungeons and Dragons marathons that take place in some goth's basement. The word pharmacy and pharmaceutical are derived, as I already mentioned, from the word pharmakeia and in many cases is directly connected throughout the Bible with sorcery, witchcraft, and satanic rebellion. So, could it be, could it be, that Satan and the gods are far more invested in the pharmaceutical industry than they are in Marilyn Manson or Lady Gaga? Case in point, have you ever heard of the company Solvay? S-O-L-V-A-Y. Solvay is a chemical industry. Solvay is a Belgian chemical company founded in 1863 with its head office in Brussels, Belgium. In 2015, it realized a 12.4 billion euro increase in revenue. Its sales are emerging as one of the highest sales growth in all of the world. And it takes in more than about 43% of other countries. Countries, this company makes more money than countries do. They have 145 sites all over the world. And Solvoy, that we can tell, employs over 30,000, close to 40,000 people in 53 different countries. It was founded in 1863. And don't be surprised if you haven't heard of it. It's one of those mega companies, one of those ones behind the shadows, behind the curtains, behind, behind, that seems to pull the strings. 
As I stated, it was founded in 1863 by Ernest Solvay and his brother Alfred to produce sodium carbonate by the Solvay process they discovered. Before World War I, Solvay was the largest multinational company in the world. It was formerly also active in pharmaceuticals, but has recently sold and diversified so that it has been able to actually remove itself one step away while still remaining a parent company and director of the pharmaceutical wing of its company. The company is also a supporter of the Solvay conferences that were started by Ernest Solvay in 1911. Now you say, okay, Brother Tillis, what's the big deal about the Solvay company and the pharmaceutical, Big Pharma? Well, Solvay was and is the main producer of a drug by the name of Luvox. You're probably not familiar with Luvox, but it is the same thing with offshoots of Prozac, Zantex, and others. It is a drug that, Luvox, it's a drug that has such powerful side effects that it was actually implicated in the Columbine shooting. Here, ladies and gentlemen, we begin our descent down the rabbit hole. In an article entitled, Columbine Shooting Victim Sue Solve Pharma, September 3rd, 2002, from Insight Magazine, Insight Magazine reporter Kelly Patricia O'Meara reports that 19-year-old Mark Taylor, a victim of the shooting spree at Columbine High School in 1999, spent nearly two months in the hospital, plus three years of follow-up operations. Taylor is suing the drug company Solve Pharmaceuticals, manufacturer of Lovox, an antidepressant drug whose adverse side effects include manic and psychotic reactions. The suit claims that Eric Harris, who, by the way, investigators believe was the main and driving force between the two shooters, Eric Harris had been taking Lovox at the time of the shooting and that the drug triggered his violent outburst. Taylor's lawyer Nebraska attorney John DeCamp, and you might want to remember that name, John DeCamp, and Nebraska and the Franklin Affair cover-up. You might want to do your research on that. John DeCamp is quoted as saying, Two days after I took the case, Solvoy pulled Lovox from the market. I don't know if my coming on the case had any bearing on them pulling the drug, but it is interesting, he stated. Solvoy removed the Lovox temporarily, temporarily, from the U.S. market to revise data about how Lovox is manufactured. A consultant in Taylor's lawsuit, Dr. Anne Blank Tracy, heads the International Coalition for Drug Awareness. She states the following, quote, Suing Solvay for the injuries Mark Taylor suffered is one of the biggest SSRI suits we'll ever see, Tracy stated. It is a pivotal case because what happened at Columbine was so big, it's really crazy when you think about it. All you have to do is read the Lovox package insert to see that Eric's actions were due to an adverse reaction to this drug. Show me a drug anywhere that has listed mania and psychosis as frequent adverse reactions. That is what the insert says of Lovox. There is no doubt in my mind that Lovox caused Eric Harris to commit these acts. Now, let me simply say here that I, as a Bible believer, I have to say that I would disagree with her terminology causing it. Now, the Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked who can know it. The first murder was committed in the garden of, outside the Garden of Eden by Cain, and the reality is the heart of man is very, very dark. So I don't know necessarily that it caused it, but did that drug open up this young man to the powers of darkness? Could a drug be so powerful that it alters the very chemical makeup of the brain, that it makes the mind and the eyes and the ears more susceptible more perceptible to the spirit world. The article goes on to state that the medical record of Dylan Klebold and most school shooters are sealed, allegedly to protect the minor child. But information relating to drugs and adverse reactions to them, especially a propensity to trigger violence, no pun intended, should be accessible to the public, as it is, in fact, becoming a public hazard. Well, this is not an issue of privacy, one would argue, but rather an issue of cover-up. The FDA, the Federal Drug Administration, should use its leverage to demand full disclosure of hazardous drug side effects. Now, the manufacturer, Solve, the manufacturer of Lovox, was the antidepressant that Harris had been prescribed, and he was taking it at the time of the shooting spree. 
It is a major reality that is swept under the rug. Everyone from den- everyone goes from the point of denying it to saying there were only trace amounts found in it. But regardless of the matter, the young man was taking one of the most powerful known antidepressant drugs at the time of the shooting. And despite the deadly assault against him, Taylor's perception of the young man who nearly killed him is surprising. Taylor tells Insight magazine, quote, I'm suing Solvay because I believe that Eric Harris did what he did because of this drug. I didn't know Eric that much personally, but I knew him as one of the, quote, trench coat mafia. Everybody thought Eric and Dylan were the nicest people. My cousin, who was in Eric's class, told me that Eric and Dylan used to bring her flowers and cookies. Eric was forced onto these drugs, and I feel sorry for him. Like so many other kids who were put on these drugs, I don't have ill feelings against him since I don't think you can hold him accountable because he didn't know what he was doing. Taylor's lawsuit against Solvoy claims that the mind-altering drug Lovox was the cause of Harris's rampage and that the drug made Harris manic and psychotic. Now, what you have to understand is that Lovox is in a class of antidepressants called SSRIs, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. And what that does is it acts with the serotonogenic system in the brain, as do Prozac, Zoloft, and Paxil. What's profound about that is, is that SSRI drugs are the same kind of drug as LSD and ecstasy. There is almost no difference between these kissing cousins of drugs. They both interact with the, serotoni- with the serotonogenic system. Now, I want you to let that sink in for just a moment if you're listening. LSD we put people in jail for. Ecstasy, we put people in jail for it. But Lovox, Prozac, and Paxil, and Xanax, these are all, all okay because they're prescribed by a doctor who is told what they are doing. Far away, in labs headed by beings, we know not from where or what they are or who they are, are pumping drugs into our kids and marriages and homes into our society at an unalterable, unimaginable speed. The Food and Drug Administration approved Lovox in 1997 for treatment of obsessive-compulsive behavior in children, but not for the treatment of depression. Again, these are all abstract, made-up diagnoses of issues that are empirically nor scientifically arrived at. How do you scientifically arrive at obsessive-compulsive disorder? How do you scientifically arrive at a, a diagnosis of depression? How do you scientifically arrive at a diagnosis of anxiety or bipolar? It is one of the greatest con jobs ever pulled on the American quote-unquote mind. And that is the Academy of Psychological Institute. It's, It's nonsense. The physician's desk reference, the PDR, records that During controlled clinical trials of Lovox, manic reactions developed in 4% of the children that we're told of. Now, mania is defined as a form of psychosis characterized by exalted feelings, delusions of grandeur, and overproduction of ideas. Court records show that the prescription for Harris had been filled ten times between April 1998 and March uh, 1999, and that three and a half months before the shooting, the dose had been increased. A common thread... Many experts say they are finding prior to adverse reaction to psychotropic drugs. The autopsy of Harris revealed a therapeutic, quote, therapeutic level of Lovox in his system. The PDR lists the adverse reactions of Lovox to the nervous system. And here it is. Frequent. Here's what happens frequently. Amnesia, apathy, hyperkinesis, hyperkinosis, manic reaction, psychotic reaction, Infrequently, there is delirium, delusion, depersonalization, drug dependence, emotional liability, euphoria, hallucinations, hostility, hysteria, increased libido, paralysis, paranoid reaction, phobia, psychosis, sleep disorder, stupor, twitching, and vertigo. Anyone up for a dose of that? Now, here's the crazy thing, and I want you to think of this with me. How would you actually know how these side effects are coming to be. Doesn't it sound logical? And I could be wrong. But I mean, how are you going to know if a rat is delusional? How are you going to know if a rat has hysteria? 
I mean, it seems to me that if you're going to tell me that these are all legitimate side effects, there has to be people willing to subject themselves or other people willing to subject unwilling people to these tests. Some have actually argued that the military has been and is working side by side with these groups to exploit and expand the chemical powers. Some people actually believe that there may be a connection between the massive, under the current, under the radar experiences of people that have been abducted, quote unquote, by UFOs, and the military, working conjointly with the military and these groups to unwittingly and unknowingly test people. Not for nothing, one should remember that Dylan Harris of Columbine, his father was in the Air Force, but that's another matter for another time. Back to the drug abuse by pharmacy companies. Tracy continues in the article, Beyond the adverse reactions listed about Lovox, one of the first clues I had that these boards were on antidepressants was when it was made public that Eric and Dylan had both been in anger management classes. Anger management classes equal antidepressants. And unfortunately, Dylan Klebold's medical records have been sealed, so there's no way of knowing if, uh, what, if anything, that he was on. But it does make sense that if he was in anger management classes, he was probably prescribed some kind of antidepressant. The problem, Tracy concludes, is that this is a public safety issue. So why is everything kept secret, under lock and key? This information should be made available, shouldn't it, to the public? So that people can learn from it? I mean, if we go out of our way to make sure that we have the calorie counters on McDonald's, I mean, do you really need a calorie counter for a Big Mac? Do you really need somebody to tell you that you're going to get fat hips if you eat too many chicken nuggets? Do we really need that? And yet they pass laws. They don't want you drinking a big gulp in New York. But we are pumping our kids and our homes full of these drugs. We've got kids on these drugs that are ticking time bombs, one author says, in every school in America. We have a generation whose teeth are as knives and swords. Most of these drugs are not approved for children, but it doesn't stop doctors from prescribing them. There are no laws, and what laws are there are few and anemic. States should also, one writer says, demand toxicology reports even for suicides and murders, all of it in an attempt to find out if these drugs are affecting us in an adverse way. Eric Harris was first on Zoloft, then Lovox. Dylan Klebold, age 18, we were not allowed to see or understand if he was even involved or prescribed medication. But there you have Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. But the numbers don't lie, it's not just them. Jeff Weiss, age 16, a mass shooter. Corey Bagsgard, a mass shooter on Paxil. Chris Fetters, 18, I'm sorry, 13, was taking Prozac. Christopher Pittman, age 12, murdered both of his grandparents while taking Zoloft. Matthew Miller, age 13, hung himself in his bedroom closet after taking Zoloft for six days. Kip Kinkle, age 15, on Prozac and Ritalin, shot his parents while they slept, then went to school and opened fire, killing two classmates and injuring 22 after being pre uh, uh, prescribed Prozac. Luke Woodham, age 16, was on Prozac, killed his mother, and then killed two students, wounding six others. Michael Carneal was on Ritalin, age 14, opened fire on students at a high school prayer meeting, in West Paddock, Kentucky, three teenagers were killed, five others wounded. Andrew Golden, age 11, James Wilson, age 19, Elizabeth Bush, age 13, Jason Hoffman, Jared Victor, Chris Shanahan, Jeff Franklin, Kevin Ryder, Alex Kim, Diane Ruthier. I could go on and on and on. Billy Wickham, Kara Java, Gareth Christensen, Matthew Miller, Kurt Donis, Woody Johnson, Hamad Mimon, Maddie Sari. And the Finnish gunman, Pekka Eric, age 18, had been taking antidepressants before he killed eight people and wounded a dozen more in high school. Then stuck the gun in his mouth and blew his brains out. Asa Kuhn, Jared Lee, James Egan Holmes, Jacob Tyler Roberts, and Adam Peter Lanza, age 20, killed 26 and wounded two in Newton, Connecticut, or so we're told. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. So what does Solve and a drug company, however sick they may be, have to do with the powers of darkness and Satan? 
You say, okay, look, preacher, I mean, maybe they're a drug company. Maybe they're trying to do some good, but there's side effects we haven't understood and this and that. You still haven't really brought that back to how the powers of darkness could be involved in big pharma. Well, in Belgium, there is a very secret castle situated near the village of Muno in Belgium. This castle, according to many investigators, is the center of the occult and has a cathedral with a dome containing a thousand lights, a reference used by the New World Order front man George Bush himself. The castle is referred to as the Mother of Darkness. It is also rumored that the famous monarch program, or should I say the infamous monarch programming, was done there. The Castle of Darkness is a place where there are sexual perversions, mind torture, monarch training, sex magic, and even the famous case called the Dutro Affair, whereby children involved in a sex ring run by pedophiles were used for satanic perversion, offered to the high and mighty who run the world, so much so that skulls were actually found around the woods of the castle. This castle is also known not only as the Mothers of Darkness, but as the Castle of the Kings. And I do want to remind you that in Revelation, the Bible says that there are kings that will rule with the Antichrist. I do not personally believe that these are human kings in and of themselves. They may be something along the lines of Judas. Have not I chosen you, and one of you is a devil? Man, devil, hybrid, whatever you want to say. This castle, its real name is the Chateau de Amaroy, is located in Belgium, near the village of Muno, as I already stated. The castle and its domain once belonged to Prince Philip of Gotha, Count of Flanders, and father of King Albert. He purchased the property in 1869. The castle's romantic style was built in 1877, it actually has 365 windows representing the days of the year. The castle was later bought and is now in the controlling hands of Alice Solvay, niece of the Belgian scientist and industrialist Ernest Solvay, Solvay still owned by the Solvays today. Not that I agree with everything that he says at all, but at times... He has good information. David Icke makes the following statement, quote, The reason that Belgium is the headquarters for Satanism and so many brotherhood institutions is very simple. The brotherhood created Belgium for just this reason in 1831, and they opposed, imposed upon it a reptilian royal bloodline, the house of the Saxe coburg gotha the bloodline of the British royal family. And through its branch in Prussia, the supporters of Adam Weishaupt, the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati, have tried to run the world. The pedophile murder ring, which came to light in Belgium in 1996, is but one part of the satanic network, operating from and in that country. It was organized by Marc Dutro, who is connected to the satanic order of Abraxas, based in the village near Charlet in southern Belgium, not far, not far at all, from the Castle of Darkness. Abraxax, Abrasax is a fat-bellied demon from whom it is likely the ma magical term abracadabra originated. Dutro, buried alive, an accomplice, supposedly came out brought out in the court documents. Bernard Weinstein, and among the Weinstein's effects was a letter from somebody named Abrasax, signed by someone describing himself as the Egyptian god Anubis. It ordered him to provide presents for the high priestess of the order and apparently gave specific details of the age and sex the victim must, must be. The British Sunday Times reported the accounts of witnesses describing black masses in which children were killed in front of audiences which included prominent members of the Belgian and UN and EU society. A Belgian newspaper reported that a former commissioner of the European Union was among a group of judges and senior politicians, lawyers, and policemen who attended the orgies at the Belgian Chateau organized by Michael Nihu, one of the accomplices of Mr. Marc Dutro, the alleged leader of the pedophile ring. One investigator said it was like going back to the medieval ages. In fact, there has not been an old, middle, or modern age, Ike states, with regard to these rituals. It is a seamless flow over thousands of years under the control of the Sarnay bloodlines. 
Human skulls, in fact, were found at the sacrificial sites, identified by witnesses, particularly at the sex headquarters. The satanic group behind the Belgian murders is said to interconnect with similar rings in Holland, Germany, and America. In truth, it will be part of the global network which operates in all countries. Satanism is run like a transnational corporation. Another writer states the following. One of the global centers of Satanism is the castle of the mothers of darkness, the castle of the kings. In Belgium, near the appropriately named village Muno Bell, the castle is close to the French border and some 20 kilometers from Luxembourg. It is protected from view by thick forests and guards keep out the curious. Google has reportedly blogged it out so that you can't even see it via Google Earth. In the grounds is a cathedral with a dome containing a thousand lights. And when President Bush talked about a thousand points of light, he was speaking in code, many believe, about the place of initiation for the highest initiates in the Satanic Pyramid. In this Satanic Cathedral is the throne of the High Priestess of the Upper Hierarchy, a position known as the Queen Mother. Every day, apparently, a child is sacrificed in the basement. Ceremonies are performed here to the Satanic Goddess known as Lilith, a demon in the Hebrew Kabbalah. In ancient summer, the reptilian bloodline, as passed on through the female, was symbolized as lily. And the main reptilian gene carries were given, carried, carriers were given names like Lilith, Lil, Lilitu, Liliet. Another demon used by some quote-unquote mothers is Bilar, or Bilad, a Kabbalistic name for the force others call Satan. It is from these lands in Belgium and northern France that the bloodline families came, including the Bruces, to take over Scotland, all over centuries of time. Belgium, this little country between France and the Netherlands, is also the home of the European Union, NATO, and some believe a massive computer center where database on all people in the world are being compiled. Isn't it amazing that the castle of the Mothers of Darkness is located in the same region as the headquarters of the European Union? So, it is apparently this computer system called the Beast. And there are a number of these around the world. An elite mind control, the writer says, operation called the Janus Group is also based in NATO headquarters. Nimrod, Janus, the god with two faces, was later known to the Romans as Janus. So, the company, eyeball deep in pharmaceuticals that can be directly related to the mass murder and manipulation of children, own, coincidentally, the darkest castle in Europe connected with perversion of the most satanic kind. Your local drugstore is peddling a drug produced by a company who owns a castle called the Mothers of Darkness. Of course, there's nothing to see here. There's absolutely no connection. You're way too fanciful, Pastor Tillis. That would never be. No, demonic activity would never take place between pharmaceuticals and castles of darkness. Okay, you might be right. Maybe there is no connection. Why don't you go ahead, take your meds, and go back to sleep. The rabbit hole is far too deep for you to ever possibly imagine. Good night.